Hi, next week at my house, I'm gonna get installed a heat pump hot water system to replace our existing gas hot water system. So I thought I'd run through the numbers here because we're essentially gonna use this as a thermal battery, a home storage thermal battery. So instead of using our natural gas connection, which we've got connected uh, to our home and we pay a service uh, fee for that. So we're gonna replace that with a much bigger tank, actually, uh, 415 litres versus 170. 75 litres for our existing gas tank. It's barely big enough, our existing one. It's been annoying. It's the original one installed on the house. It's 30 years old or something. It still works, but we need extra capacity. We've been secretly waiting for it to die so that we could get a heat pump system, but we decided that we <laughs> bite the bullet now and uh, install it with a much larger heat pump system. Now, this is not an, a regular electric hot water system. This actually uses a heat pump, just like an air conditioning uh, system will use. So it's much more efficient. The co uh, coefficient of performance or COP, I think is like six or seven or something like that. It's really good. Now that doesn't break the laws of physics. It's not like you get seven times the power output than what you put in, in electricity. It's that you get seven times the equivalent heat energy out than you put in for electricity. Anyway, we won't go into the whole coefficient of performance thing. That's how air conditioners work. And the heat pump hot water system works the same way. It's got, you've got your steel tank. Here's a photo your steel tank and an external uh, heat pump, which works exactly the same as your reverse cycle air conditioner would in uh, heating up your home. And yes, here in Australia, we don't have these like central heating systems like you guys get in Europe and America and stuff like that. It's just not a thing. People talk about, oh, Dave, where's your boiler? What? That's not a thing here. To heat and cool our home here in Australia, we mostly use air conditioning, uh, reverse cycle air conditioning uh, systems. So anyway, heat pump system works the same way. So let's run through some numbers here and see, and once I get the new system installed, I'll do a video of the installation, and then I'll do a video after a few weeks or something, analyzing uh, the data to see how much energy it actually does use. And well, anyway, let's run through the numbers. So this is my existing gas usage. So I've got in, gotten my gas bills, uh, last four. Um, one of them was separated here. I don't know. I think they changed the rate on me because gas is going up and the government just announced that like energy prices are skyrocketing here just like they are in the rest of the world. Not for the same reasons, but anyway, they're going up. Um, that's not the reason we're getting it installed. We just want to use more of our excess solar, which we're currently exporting to the grid. So what I've got here is my gas usage in megajoules, because they actually tell us that on our electric bill. And then I've converted that to the electrical equivalent, because it's just energy. You can actually convert megajoules to kilowatt hours and kilowatt hours to megajoules. It's essentially the same thing. And then I've got the number of uh, days it went for. Then I've got the cost uh, for that for those number of days. So we can work out uh, the cost per day here, and we can also work out the kilowatt hour energy per day so that we can actually compare it with the electric heat pump hot water system. Now this megajoules uh, number they give us every month, not only does it change based on the uh, usage of course, but it also changes, there's actually two extra variables in there, which is the heating uh, value and the pressure factor as well. But and, and we don't need to go into that sort of details. They give us the megajoules so uh, we can convert to kilowatt hours. So anyway, if you average these numbers, it's costing us around about $2 a day. And that includes the connection fee, but we plan on disconnecting the gas entirely because the only other gas appliance we've got uh, is the barbecue, which we don't use that often. We're going to change over to bottled uh, gas for that. So we're going to disconnect gas entirely because, you know, we don't want the government, you know, holding it, you know, oh, I'll threaten to turn off your gas if you don't do something. So, yeah, screw you. I'm going <laughs> to use my excess uh, solar here. So that's uh, two bucks a day. And the average kilowatt hours uh, per day in energy uh, of course it's gas, but we can get kilowatt hours per day, is actually 12.8 kilowatt hours per day. Now that's actually quite a lot. I believe that's actually higher than an equivalent size uh, electric element, just your regular element, not a heat pump, but just a regular element, electric hot water system. They're very, well, they're 100% efficient in turning electrical energy into heat, but uh, they're not very efficient compared to heat pump systems, which have a greater coefficient of uh, performance. Um, that's why they, they promote these heat pump hot water systems as being able to save you energy and hence save you uh, cost. Now, the heat pump system that I've got is a uh, made in Australia, you bloody ripper, uh, Reclaim. It's a 415 litre uh, jobby. It's their biggest uh, size and it's a stainless steel, paid extra for the uh, stainless steel. So it's pretty pricey. It uses a Japanese pump 
by all the best stuff's made in Japan uh, and Australia. Um, so it's actually very pricey. It's like the highest, I think it's one of the highest price uh, heat pump hot water systems. You can get a lot cheaper, but you know, they might be some, you know, made in China thing or something, right? So it's 5,500 bucks. Uh, that's the cost for the install um, and to change, you know, to cut off the gas and change all the pipe work and everything. So that includes install, plus there's some government rebate on top of that. I think there's about 1,000 bucks worth of government government, state, and there's two different rebates, um, state and uh, federal, I believe. Anyway, so that's uh, that's what it's costing me, basically, 5,500 bucks. So from their uh, website, they actually claim, reclaim, claim, that uh, it, uh, energy per day typically is three kilowatt hours for the 315 litre tank version, and its power consumption is like a kilowatt or less. So it doesn't actually take much actual peak. Uh, power, so there's going to be plenty of power left over to charge our EV and charge our other stuff uh, during the day. So no worries there. So it's really good. It uses less than a kilowatt. So what they're going to do is install just a regular, you know, 10 amp power point next to the uh, heat pump uh, controller, and it just runs from that. It just plugs in um, to a regular power point. So I'll just be able to plug in my energy meter there, and I'll be able to get data over uh, time. So really easy to uh, actually. Uh, look at in future videos, uh, monitor the consumption of that. Anyway, so as I said, our current gas uh, tank is about 175 litres per day, and we pretty much use almost that. Sometimes we actually run out, you know, if the kids use a bit more water, somebody has a bath, Mrs. EV blog stays in there for too long, whatever, right? Um, you know, there's four people in the household. But basically, I'm going to say that we use that 175 litres per day. Let's just sort of round it to that. We're sort of on the capacity uh, limit. So the 415 litre, we were, you know, I don't greatly doubt we'd ever use that in one day. We'd have to have so many other people stay in there and everyone's taking a bath or doing whatever, um, you know, that's, uh, that's going to use a lot of hot water. So I don't see us, but we're installing the extra capacity just because we can. And it's also used as a thermal battery as well, because we're essentially taking our excess solar energy, which we usually uh, export to the grid and get paid a pittance for, and we're going to store the energy um, inside our hot water tank. Beauty. So let's assume that we use 175 litres per day so that the consumption is uh, 1.7 kilowatt hours per day based on the reclaims figure. Once again, I haven't measured it. That might change when I actually uh, measure it. But because we're not using the entire uh, tank, you know, it's it's kind of hard to know how much energy it's going to use. But that's probably in the ballpark. 1.7 kilowatt hours per day. If you compare that to the energy, if you want to know how much uh, energy, actual energy, a gas hot water system uses compared to a heat pump hot water system? There you go. It's about seven and a half times, 12.8 kilowatt hours uh, per day versus 1.7 kilowatt hours per day to be uh, verified. But you know, it's like seven and a half times. It's like it's even worse, as I said, than just a regular straight element. Uh, electric hot water system. So gas is, you know, so gas is actually pretty terrible in terms of just pure energy, uh, you know, consumed. Now, of course, you have to go into, you know, the whole, uh, what it costs to, uh, you know, in terms of the embodied energy to actually, uh, you know, extract that gas and distribute it and all that sort of stuff and, and the environmental impacts. And, ah, oh, you could go, uh, you know, keep going to all that until the cows come home. But just in terms of energy usage, yeah, gas is actually pretty poor. Um, 12.8 kilowatt hours per day. We can lower that to probably 1.7. We're not in a chicken dinner. So will this thing pay itself back? Well, the payback period is the uh, cost to us, which is 5,500 bucks, uh, divided by the uh, 70, $722 per year that we're going to save because uh, when it's not going to cost us anything. We've got tons of excess uh, energy going to that in a second from our solar um, that we can just use. So it's effectively free for us. So it doesn't, you know, there's no energy cost to us. So it's effectively free. So you divide those and the payback period seems to be about 7.6 years. Um, that, but that doesn't include any increases which the government said are coming. They've warned everyone that gas prices increase and electricity prices are increasing. So that doesn't include that. That's just based on our current, uh, what we're paying at the moment. Um, so, and it seems to have uh, jumped up. So it seems to have jumped up from, you know, it was like a dollar ninety, dollar fifty four, dollar seventy one, and it suddenly jumped up. Most recently, um, this is the most recent bill we had, I only went to uh, 6th of uh, September, probably get another one in the next 
few weeks or months or something, and it's gone up to $2.82. So it seems like gas prices are really going up here in Australia already. Struth. Now, in terms of uh, how much energy this is going to use per day, do we have enough excess solar capacity? Yeah, it turns out, like by an order of magnitude, or so, almost an order of magnitude or something. Uh, here's a shot of just today's energy. I just uh, screen captured this uh, before. And you can see that we've exported, wasted 19 kilowatt hours, and the day's not even over yet. Uh, the sun hasn't you know, gone down yet. And we charge the EV for a little bit in there. That's that uh, green uh, spike you can see in there. And um, yeah. Yeah, and if this hot water, I think, if we only use 175 litres worth per day, um, then it's probably only going to cost us like under two kilowatt hours uh, per day. So, you know, it's like order of magnitude less than what we're just exporting essentially, you know, pissing it away, getting paid a pittance to the grid. Of course, it's helping out other people on the grid and everything else. Someone else is using it, but uh, yeah, we don't get paid much for it. We'd rather use it ourselves. So yeah, um, unfortunately, even though we got the biggest tank we could at 415 litres, um, if it's only 1.7 kilowatt hours per day, of course, if you use the full 415, that could jump up to, you know, five kilowatt hours, six kilowatt hours a day or something. If we emptied the whole thing overnight and then we uh, you know, had to recharge it during the day, then, uh, you know, from empty, then it'd take more energy, of course. And to actually get figures on that, you would have to actually get, uh, you know, really accurate uh, energy figures on that. You would have to know the water flowing, come in and out, come in, and stuff like that so you could calculate the uh, actual volumetric energy and all that sort of stuff and that's that's just way too hard i'm not going to be doing that all we need is a kilowatt hour figure uh per day and that should do it I and mean, i can do that with a simple mains energy logger so there you go this is a before video and uh, i'll do an install video next week when it's been installed and then some follow-up videos actually seeing if this 1.7 kilowatt hour per day figure is right i'd, I'd be disappointed if it's over two kilowatt hours um, per day because they claim three kilowatt hours for 315 litres and we don't use 315 litres we only use probably you know the current tanks only 175 and we've got the lifestyle where we actually do our showers at night we don't shower in the morning so charging this up during the day this reclaim system actually has a timer on it so we'll set it to uh, time during the day it's actually designed for this so it's got a specific mode where you can uh, time it to come on during the day when you've got excess solar and even on the worst day it only chews like a kilowatt even on the crappiest pouring down rain day we're probably still going to get a kilowatt um, power out of our eight kilowatt nominal eight kilowatt uh, system so we should at least have that so we really shouldn't have to dip into the grid or any future battery storage we've got to uh, charge this thing up during the day and it shouldn't take long it should only take a couple of hours to reclaim the energy <laughs> reclaim i'm here a week uh, reclaim the energy that uh we used at night when we shower and uh use the hot water we don't really use hot water for much else you know apart from the sink and stuff like that we use a bit of uh hot water for washing up but our dishwasher uses an electric uh element uh hot water and we do that during the day to use excess and also our uh, washing machine as well if we do put it on a hot cycle that's done during the day so so we can use excess solar from that. They don't use hot water as well. So pretty much we only use hot water for uh, showering and the sink. And that's, uh, you know, pretty much it. So anyway, I hope you found that interesting. Um, yeah, I was surprised at how much energy, I'd never done the calculations before. I was surprised at how much energy um, natural gas actually used for heating up. I thought it was, you know, quite competitive, um, but it, it, it's not. It looks like it's probably gonna be seven and a half times more than what we can get with the heat pump system and even more than an electric element hot water system. Anyway, if you've got numbers different to this, please leave it in the comments down below. But uh, yeah, look out for future videos. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. As always, comments down below and over on the EV blog forum. Catch you next time. Oh, one more thing. I will actually plug my Odyssey channel. I am actually putting exclusive content over on Odyssey. So if you want some exclusive videos, check them out over there. It's the only place you can see them. Thank <laughs> you.